Okay, before we start the, uh, the, the class today, uh, I'm gonna introduce uh, the second uh, part of the HCIE, the module two. Uh, this module is about the uh, campus network, uh, in particular, the iMaster NCE campus and the cloud campus solution of Huawei. So uh, what I want to say is that the, this part, the campus part, I think uh, it might be the most important part of HCIE. Okay, uh, in particular in the HCIE Datacom lab exam. So uh, in the following days, I, I, I need you to focus on the, the theory and the practice, the, the operation on the, uh, on the, on the IMAS nc campus controller. So let's get it started. And uh, today our topic is the enterprise campus network overview. Uh, if you have attended the, the training for the HCIP campus, uh, you will know uh, this uh, slide is uh, actually we have shown uh, part of the content of this slide in the HCIP campus co uh, courses. So I'm going to. Uh, simply review the enterprise campus network. So uh, as we know, campus are everywhere in our city. We can say that except home, everywhere is campus. Uh, the the uh, common campus network like the uh, government uh, network, uh, shopping mall uh, network, and also uh, office building campus work and a school campus network. Uh, According to the statics, uh, over 90% of urban residents work and live in campuses and 80% uh, uh, of GDP is created in campus. So we can see that the campus uh, is very common to see in our normal life. And uh, uh, as long as the, and, and the, the campus network uh, are playing a closely um, important part in our uh, society. So this course, we will describe campus network, common architecture and the technologies of campus network and the typical application of these technologies. Okay, uh, let's see the target of this course. Uh, on completion of this course, you will be able to describe what a campus network is like and describe the typical architecture of campus network uh, describe the trends and the challenges of campus network, describe Huawei cloud campus solution, understand the common technologies used on campus network, and we will show you a typical applications of campus network technologies. So we have four parts. The first part is the introduction of campus network. And the second part uh, is about the campus network challenges and the Huawei cloud campus solution. Third part, typical campus network technologies. We will talk about the layer two technologies, layer three technologies, uh, security technologies, and so on. And uh, in the fourth part, uh, I'm gonna give you three cases about the campus network technologies. Okay, so let's go to the first part, introduction to campus networks. So uh, in, the, in, in the former, we have talked about the campus are very uh, common to see and uh, uh, the campus network is very important. So there are uh, statics about the, the importance of campus network in our daily life. We can see the uh, over uh, 90% uh, city, uh, city re residents work and live in campuses and over 80% uh, GDP is created in campuses. Uh, that's the importance of campus. So uh, we know that we are in the digital society. So the network is a fund fundamental of our uh, digital society. So the campus network uh, also a very important. So a campus network generally refers to the internal network of a campus or uh, or organization which is connected uh, connected to the wide 
wide area network uh, known as the one network and uh, other networks like data center network and other cloud network. So a campus network is built to ensure that key enterprise services are running more efficiently. The uh, existence of campus network help, uh, for example, enterprise to increase their work efficiency. efficiency. And a campus network can classify into large scale and medium scale campus network and also small and uh, small and medium sized campus network by scale. So next I'm going to show you uh, some the, the cl uh, classifications of campus network, how we can clar uh, clarify the campus network. Uh, so the first way to uh, clar uh, clarify the, classify the campus network is, uh, is by its scale. We can uh, classify the campus network into uh, the large scale campus network, medium sized campus network, and a small campus network according to their numbers of terminals or number of N, uh, network elements. Okay, this is the uh, method one and the method two. We can uh, classify the campus network by the served objects. For example, uh, we have we, we know that some campus network only served for the internal internal uh, personnel. For example, the uh, the the government network, okay, or uh, and the other uh, kind of uh, campus network is the open campus network. Uh, they are open to uh, external personnel, such as the, for example, when we uh, work walking to a shopping mall, we can connect to its free Wi-Fi. So the shopping malls camp campus network is what we call the open campus network because it can, ser uh, uh, it can provide a s service to those external personnel. And the third one is the service. We can cl uh, classify the campus network by the service, uh, some, camp net, uh, some, some campus network only provide single uh, services. Uh, at, at the same time, they may have the simple network architecture. And the, the other one is a multi-service camp campus network. This kind of campus network carries uh, multiple services and uh, sometimes they're the, the architecture are more complex than the single service campus network. And uh, according to the access mode, we have wired campus network and uh, wireless campus network. Uh, for the wired campus network, uh, every terminal is access to the mm, network by cables. And for the wireless campus network, as we know, the most common wireless uh, technology is a uh, Wi-Fi technology, okay, which is call, also called WLAN, and uh, we deploy APs and uh, 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 to provide wireless access services. It can enhance the uh, the, the the work efficiency and uh, provide P BYOD, okay. Uh, that's uh. And, and we also can uh, classify the, the, the campus, nest, campus network uh, according to their industrials. Uh, different industrials have different um, requirements for the campus network. So sometimes their, uh, their architecture of, camp, uh, of network is uh, are different. So we have the enterprise campus network and the school campus network, government campus network, uh, business campus network, and so on. And uh, uh, according to their functions or their uh, service, services, their architecture sometimes may be different. Okay, uh, this is the uh, classification of campus network. We just need to simply know about the classifications and we don't uh, we don't need to 
uh, study more about the, the, the details. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is the typical physical architecture of a campus network. I believe that you have seen uh, this topology in in the HCIA or HCIP materials. So uh, actually, the campus network uh, they are mm, they are quite uh, uh, familiar. They are they are quite f familiar to us. So. Uh, actually, in the campus network, we use the um, we 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 have the egress form, we have the core layer, aggregation layer, access layer, and the terminal layer. And sometimes in the if we have a small scale data center, okay, then we will deploy the data center uh, uh, connect to the core layer switches, okay, and we also will have the OAM zone. Uh, in the OMM zone, we will deploy like the the, the mm, SMP server, like the eSight uh, product of Huawei or iMaster NCE dash campus controller. We will deploy those services in the OMM zone. <clears throat> this is the uh, typical physics architecture of a campus network. Okay. That's the simple introduction to campus network, and then we will uh, we are going to see the campus network challenges and Huawei Cloud Campus solution. Okay, uh, and we all know that we are in the uh, in uh, challenge uh, to the industrial uh, uh, digital society. So uh, the industrial digital transformation improves efficiency and uh, customers. Satisf uh, satisfaction. So uh, we need the digital workspace, uh, digital education, digital manufacturing. So uh, this is the, uh, the the requirements of the of the uh, of from the the work, from the education, and from our daily life. And then in the digital area. How should the campus network support digital transformation across industrial? We have four uh, requirements for the network. We need to access the campus network anytime, anywhere, and the, the network must provide high quality service. And we also need the campus network to provide on demand services. Uh, we need the services to be quickly deployed and uh, 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 adjust, uh, adjusted the flexibility. And uh, we need the network to wrap roll out of value added applications. And also we need the network to be, uh, to be precise measurement and uh, evaluation of user experience. We need the network to, uh, to focus on our uh, user experience and uh, we need the network to uh, automatically adjust the, the 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 network according to the KPI of the network, and we need the efficient and the intelligent OAM to release the network engineer from the burden of the OAM nowadays. Okay, this is the requirements. Uh, or we can see the, 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 the future of campus network. And then we're going to see the uh, development, development of the campus network. We have, uh, clearly we have three generations of the campus network. The first generation is, uh, uh, is in 1980, uh, when IEEE released the IEEE uh, uh, three, uh, eight, eight zero two dot three standard, which is known the Ethernet standard. It's uh, it's signal, uh, signaling the birth of Ethernet technology, and by using twisted pair connections, Ethernet was the more cost cost effective and easier to implement than previous network technologies. Okay, this is the generation one. And uh, the second generation 
campus network is in 1990s, the growth popu uh, popularity of World Wide Web, 3W, and instant messaging software posed great bandwidth challenges for campus network. This, however, could not be met on the routed-based campus back backbone network. Against this backdrop, layer three switch were de uh, deployed in 1996. A layer three switch is also called a routed switch because it in uh, integrates both layer two switch and layer three routing functions. Such a switch came with a simple and efficient layer three uh, forwarding eng in engine uh, designed and optimized for campus scenarios. Uh, its layer three routing capabilities was approximately uh, equivalent to layer two switching performance. Uh, this is the uh, second generation and in the mid uh, 2000s um, it is the third generation's campus network. As we all know, the smart mobile terminals first emerged in uh, 2007. Since then, they quickly become popular and reach a wide audience. Drive by, uh, driven by this, Wi-Fi technologies also develop, uh, develop uh, rapidly. Wi-Fi has subsequently became, become uh, deeply integrated into a uh, typical feature of campus network. And also the SDN, the software-defined network, has also been introduced to campus network in order to simplify servicing. This generation of campus network generally met the requirements of enterprises that are in the early stage of wireless transformation. However, Wi-Fi networks cannot deliver a high enough service quality and therefore can only be used as a Supplement to wide, uh, wide campus network. <laughs> okay, this is the third uh, generation multi service converged support, the third generation campus network. And uh, now we, we need to imagine what's the future, what, what, uh, what's the, the, the campus network is going to be like uh, in future. I think uh, the, 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 the future campus network should be uh, autonomous driving and it can support intelligent ON and it can uh, uh, provide ultra broadband for the clients. Okay, this is the, the constant involving campus network. So, sorry, hold on. So, uh, to in, uh, to to implement to 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 upgrade the campus network, we need to see the 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 requirements and the challenges of large scale and medium scale campus network. So for the uh, large scale campus network and the medium sized campus network, we have three uh, main problems. The first one is to convert to transport. The second one, we have to focus on the user experience. And the third one is not uh, network automation. Okay, uh, these are the requirements and uh, the challenges. Okay. Uh, maybe you can see these uh, challenges and uh, requ uh, requirements uh, uh, after the class, okay. As for the small and medium sized campus network, um, the OAM I think is the, is the most uh, difficult, uh, urgent problem to be solved. So, we need the, the, the network support by plug and play, a PMP, then the, the device support PNP, and uh, we need the, the improved 
uh, improve the deployment efficiency. And uh, since we have the uh, multiple sides of the campus network of the uh, small scale and or medium scale campus network, we need to we need to uh, we need to man, uh, manage the, the sites in a centralized manner. So uh, maybe we need a cloud platform to remotely uh, uh, to to remotely o, uh, deploy the ONM. And then uh, sometimes uh, in nowadays uh, in nowadays uh, society the 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 openness is also very popular. It's a very popular topic. So we need the network to open some APIs, uh, accelerating integration of business applications. For example, we need the network to interact with the uh, cloud platform to collect some uh, user data or some other uh, data uh, information that, uh, that we need. So we need the the network to open APIs. And also from the perspective of multi-campus network interconnection, we know that there, there is a word called SD1, right? So you define one internet. So we need the uh, branch interconnection course. We need a service pro uh, provisioning period to be short and we we need to focus on the service experience and we need a, a efficient man, a ONM and also the unified management. This is the requirements and the challenges of the interconnection between a campus network. Okay, then uh, I'm gonna introduce the cloud campus solution. And uh, I guess most of you have seen this uh, pictures, uh, figures uh, in the HCI or HCIP um, materials. This is the IMAST NC. Uh, dash, uh, this is the cloud campus solution of Huawei, and the the um, the, the 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 most important compo component of the cloud campus solution is the IMAST NC dash campus controller we uh, integrate the analysis and management and the control uh, within the imasnc-campus controller. It can uh, realize the automated network design, automated network deployment, and also the automated intelligent OAM. It uses the NetConf and Young technologies to uh, to uh, to deploy and also to 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 management uh, manage the devices and it can support uh, uh, it can support the automatic uh, deployment and also the the, the intelligent OAM. Okay, this is the uh, cloud campus solution, one stop autonomous driving solution for campus network and. Uh, it can support all the scenarios of campus network, like the simple service campus network, like the traditional campus network. It can also support the multi-service campus network. Uh, it can divide, uh, it can separate, it can uh, separate the network by deploying the virtual network to separate the services or serve it, uh, to separate the isolate the users. Okay, and it also supports the multi-branch in the connection campus. Uh, later in the SD1 part, we will use the IMAST NC campus controller to, to uh, implement the SD1 features. It can, uh, we can say that the, uh, the campus controller integrates the SD1 feature. Okay, and it, uh, the, the, the Cloud Campus solution can support the full life cycle, including the planning, deployment, ONM, and optimization. 
the full life circle of a canvas network. This is the uh, this is the schedule of the network uh, full life uh, uh, full life circle. In the day one, day zero, we do the planning on the platform, and then on day one and day two, we need to perform the hardware installation, and then the 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 canvas controller will do the physical network deployment, virtual network deployment, and also the service uh, policy provisioning. Okay, this part, the hardware installation, I think will take the most of the uh, most of the time of the deployment phase. And uh, these three, uh, these three jobs will be done by our I must NC that campus controller. And then uh, after the deployment is finished, we the, the network enter the ONM stage. The I must NC dash campus controller can support the network monitoring, uh, route, routine device maintenance, system maintenance, and also the user experience. Uh, it can support user experience visibility and the uh, exception identification and uh, uh, it can uh, locate the fault and then the optimization it needs the controller and the campus insight analyzer to work together then the ex uh, ex uh, in particular in the wireless part the network can uh, optimize can be optimized automatically without the uh, without the human or the network engineer to to do the operation and the, the cloud campus solution all, also can cover the one and LAN side of the network okay one controller can manage both LAN and WAN, like I said, uh, the MSNC dash campus controller support the ISD1 feature. So we can deploy the, the LAN network by the MSNC dash campus controller, and we also can deploy the one network on the uh, export routers with the controller. This is the introduction of canvas uh the, the cloud campus solution extremely the uh cloud cam uh, the, the controller okay next i'm gonna introduce the typical campus network technologies uh, i think you are the mm, i think you may be the 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 trainer for the hcie so uh, these are the very fundamental technologies so we just simply go uh, go through the this part because this is very uh, these technologies are very how to say it's very mm, it's very fundamental and i think most of you uh i don't know i think all of you have have already firmly understand or uh, handle these technologies so we just simply go through and for the layer three a uh, layer two technology we have vlan the voice vlan technologies which is for the uh, for the ip phone mm, we can perform the, uh, the, the 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 different server for the ip phone and uh, the spanish tree protocol which is used to uh, to 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 avoid layer two loops in our layer two networks and then the RSTP, the Rapid Spanish Tree Protocol, which is the uh, upgrade of STP. It can provide a fast convergent, uh, convergency time than the uh, STP and also the multiple Spanish Tree MSTP. It can provide multiple instance and multiple domain in the layer two network. Okay. 
and then the layer three network, uh, layer layer three technologies. We have the the OSP for version three, which is uh, dedicated for IPv4. Uh, it's a I, it's an IGP. Okay, it can implement. Uh, it support the multiple areas. Uh, it support multiple instances, and uh, mm, it's a very common uh, routing protocols in the uh, actual network. And then the PBR policy-based routing, which is uh, used uh, uh, not only use the destination IP address to uh, to 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 forward the the IP packets, we can um, uh, use the VLAN ID source or destination MAC address, Ethernet protocol type, uh, DSCP priority, and also the uh, source IP address and so on. These uh, factors to to, uh, to to forward the packet. Okay. There is a scenario that we use the PBR. We use the PBR to to force the traffic to the firewall to be checked by the firewall and go back to the go back to the uh, call switch and then to the internet. It's a common scenario of the usage policy-based routing, the PVR. Okay, uh, next uh, we will see some the WLAN technologies. Since, that, since we have the certification uh, that, uh, dedicated for the WLAN, so in the HCA dash campus, we just simply introduced the architecture of WLAN. Okay, uh, we have the FAT AP and the AC plus uh, bit AP uh, scenarios, which is for the small scale, uh, scale uh, networks. Uh, uh, for example, the families or mini stores and AC plus feed AP. For the median eyes and the large scale enterprises network or the uh, public uh, public stores or uh, public uh, uh, locations. And then we have the uh, the, the lead AP. Uh, one lead AP can work independently or manage a small number of common APs to uh, implement the basic roaming functions. Okay. Uh, Compared to the AC plus feed AP, it costs less and require a, a, a lower uh, maintenance skills. And also we uh, we have the uh, agile distributed APs. We have a central AP that can control and manage the IUs and the Central AP will be managed by the AC, the uh, access controller. And then we also have the cloud managed mode, the uh, cloud AP, the AP work on the cloud AP mode, and the IMAS NC, which is in the cloud. We can, we can see that the IMAS NC is in the cloud or in the internet. Then the IMAS NC can man, um, manage those cloud APs remotely, okay? This is fit for the scenarios like small and medium-sized enter enterprises. And also the enterprise has many, many uh, branches. It can support, it can provide a centralized uh, management method for the enterprise. And also we support the native AC. It, uh, this uh, architecture needs a switch that support native AC, which means the switch can work as a uh, work as a, a as an AC. So the net uh, the, the 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 capability of the uh, the capacity of the AC won't be the bottleneck of the network, and also the policy of wireless network and wide network can be converged. This is the uh, benefits of native AC. 
Okay, this is all about the WLAN network architectures. And then I'm gonna introduce some, um, some technologies like VRP, link aggregation, iStack, and uh, CSS to ensure the reliability of the network. The first one is the VRRP, the Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. It can virtualize uh, several routing devices into a virtual route. Like we can see, we have one uh, route, one physical route, and then we can virtual, uh, virtualize the uh, physical route into two uh, different uh, virtual route and uh, sorry we have two physical uh, uh, aggregation switches and we can virtualize these two switches into one virtual route and once one route is break down or something wrong with the physical switches the the another one can take its position and uh, the 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 IP packet will be routed normally. Okay, in the typical uh, application of MS, uh, the, the 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 VRP is work with the work with the MSDP. For example, here we have uh, VLANs from eleven to twenty and twenty one to thirty, and we have. Uh, MSTP instance 10 and instance 20. The 10 include the VR, uh, VRP uh, 11 to 20 and the MS, uh, the, the, the instance 20 include the VLAN 21 to 30. And then the aggregation switch one, we need it to be the uh, root bridge, primary root bridge of instance one and also the uh, the the must of VLAN if 11 to 20 and uh, same uh, reason same same thing with the uh, instance 20 and also the VLAN if 21 to 30 so these two technologies are used together to implement gateway redundancy load balancing and also the layer two loop prevent, uh, prevent, uh, prevention and also the reliability. And the, the link aggregation, iStack and the CSS, uh, I think uh, the, the medium size or large size network, they must use the link aggregation, iStack and CSS because these technologies, they can not on, only increase the bandwidth and also can um, uh, also can uh, pro, uh, provide the device level reliability not only the uh, uh, the, the link level uh, reliability also the device level reliability okay and then the nqa network quality ana uh, analysis uh, it NQA measures the performance of various protocol running on the network, which can help users collect statics about network operation in real time. And according to the statics, the the NQA can check with, for example, check with the BFT, check with the static routes. Okay. Uh, to change the network somehow. Uh, next is about the security uh, network security uh, technologies. The first one is support isolation. Sometimes we need to to isolate the users, and we want to save the VLAN resource then we can use the port isolation. We can separate the users in the same VLAN. Okay. And we, uh, so the, the requirements will be satisfied. 
if we use the port isolation. We have the layer two isolation and the layer three uh, and the layer a layer two isolation and the layer three interworking and also the another mode is the layer two and the layer three isolation. Uh, some products, some switches support both modes, but some only support layer two isolation and the layer three interworking. So when we when we configure the devices, we have to uh, look up in the corresponding uh, net uh, product uh, documentation. This is the port isolation. The principle is very easy to understand. And next one is the Ethernet port security. Uh, the, the, the port security will be configured on an interface of a switch. It can limit the number of MAC address learned by the interface. Then punishment measure can be taken when a violation occurs. The interface configured with port security can convert the learned MAC address into secure MAC address, preventing device with other MAC address from accessing the network through the interface. This is the, uh, the, the function of uh, port security. Next one is the MACSEC. We know the IPSEC is to prevent the security of IP packet transmission. So the MACSEC is to, to provide security for the layer two communication. It also built the MACSEC tunnel between switches and it can provide the data integrate, uh, integrity check and the user data encryption. It can also uh, provide data source authentication verification and also uh, uh, support rely protection. This is the MACSEC. The next one is the DHCP snooping, which is used to, uh, to defend the network from DHCP attacks like the unauthorized DHCP server, it uh, gives the invalid DHCP ACK, NAK, and offer message to the client who really want the IP address. Next one is the DAI, Dynamic AIP Inspection. Uh, it work with the, uh, it work in the access switch, layer two switches. It check the ARP message, like the ARP request, ARP response. And we, uh, it can work with the DHCP snooping or static configured entries. If the binding table is not exist, uh, existed on the switch, the IP packets, the, 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 sorry, the ARP packet will be, will be rejected, will be denied or be dropped by the switches, which enable uh, the, the DAI function. Next one is IPSD. The IPSD also work with the DHCP snooping. The DHCP snooping will generate the, the, the binding table on the switches and then if the switch receive a IP packet that the MAC address, IP address are not in the binding table, then this packet will be refused, rejected by the switch, which can also uh, pre, uh, def, uh, prevent the man in the middle attack. This is the IP source guard, which work with DHCP snooping. Okay, the next one is the, the VN of the uh, VN isolation of the IMAS MC campers. It used the uh, VRF for VN isolation, for the VN isolation. And uh, to deploy the, the, the policy, we use the uh, 
in the in the in the uh, if we don't use the VRF, then we need uh, use to deploy the we need to deploy ACLs and also uh, uh, root filters somehow and to 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 isolate the routing tables and also the IP packets. So now we use the VRF for VN isolation. We can uh, isolate the layer three networks by using the VRF. Okay, the next one to ensure the network security is the network admission control. Okay, in the HCIE, uh, in the DATCOM certification, we mainly introduce the dot one X authentication, MAC address authentication and portal authentication. And uh, I think this is the most topic in the campus network and also in the uh, certification exam, the network admission control, which is deployed by the MSNC dash campus. Next one is some uh, application for technologies like the DHCP, which dynamically configures and uniformly manages IP addresses of hosts. It can it can provide IP addresses for those DHCP clients. And in the large scale campus network, the DHCP server and the client may not in the same layer three uh, layer layer two network. So we need a DHCP relay device to relay the DHCP packets from the clients to the server. And the DHCP support various uh, options and the, the, the option 148 is to implement plug and play of network devices in the cloud campus solutions and option four three is used to register an AP with an AC that reside on a different network segment from that AP in WLAN scenario. And uh, vendors may customize the options for their own. This is the DCP options. And then the network time protocol NTP, it is used uh, to synchronize the time, uh, synchronize the time in different layer of the network. This is the network time protocol, NTP protocol. Uh, it belongs to somehow the uh, network management protocol. Next one is the SNMP simple network management protocol. Mm, we have NMS and also the SNMP client in the network. And uh, the uh, uh, NMS use the MIP to, to manage and also to collect data from the managed device, the SNMP client. And uh, uh, I must NC dash campus controller can work as a SNMP protocol. The next one is the NetConf, which is uh, which is used to uh, implement the plug and play of devices. This is the uh, the, the NetConf has three objects like the NetConf client, the server, and also the man messages. The NetConf protocol support the uh, several operations like the query data, edit data, backup, uh, restoration, and also lock, unlock, and also support the rollback of the configuration. The NetConf, I think, is much more uh, functional than the SNMP, and uh, it's very clear to use the NetConf in the, and 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 it supports, uh, it provides the openness of the devices. And the next one is the uh, LLDP. It's a layer two, uh, it's a layer two topology discovery protocol defined in IEEE. 
uh, A02.1 AB. It can collect uh, local device information, including the management IP address, device ID, and also the port ID, and uh, advertise the information to the neighboring devices. In the cloud campus solution, it can also use the tool uh, to synchronize the PMP VLAN for the devices. Okay, and uh, 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 one typical application of LDP in Huawei Cloud Campus solution is that the uh, campus can show uh, the, 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 the engineers the network topology by using the information collect, uh, collected by the LDP. Okay, the next one is telemetry. The telemetry also called the network telemetry. It is a technology that remotely collects data from physical or virtual devices at a high speed. It used the, uh, the, 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 the uh, push mode other than the pull mode. Once the analyzer um, request one, one uh, information, then the, the device will uh, somehow um, periodically push the information to the analyzer. Okay, next I'm going to show you some um, technologies I used by the export, ro uh, export devices or the, the devices in the egress room, uh, egress room. The first one is the network translation, which can trans, uh, trans, uh, tran tran change the source IP address or the destination IP address or the port of a pa IP packet to let the the packet can to let the packet be transported to the public network. And also the GRE uh, generic routing encapsulation is very common to see in the um, in the in the campus network. It is a protocol that encapsulates data packets of some network layer protocols, such as IPX, IPv6, and IPv4. It can realize the communication between, uh, between different the networks. In this figure, we can see these two networks are IPv6 network, and the uh, transition network is an IPv4 network to implement the transmission between uh, the, the, the communication between these two IPv6 network, we can use the GRE to add a extra IPv4 header and also the GRE header out of an IPv6 packet to realize the interconnection between PC1 and PC2. And uh, it is a uh, layer three tunneling technology. So, mm, so uh, it solved the transmission problems on the network use different network layer protocols. The next one is the IPsec VPN. As we just mentioned, we in the layer two network, we have MacSec technology. And in the layer three, we have IPsec VPN. The IPsec VPN is dedicated for the IPv4 technology because of its poor security. So uh, it's a set of net open network security pro protocols defined by IETF. It can support the data source authentication, data encryption, data uh, integrity, verification, and also can empty reply. This is the function of IPsec, and we will introduce the details of IPsec in the in the in the next in the next part. Okay, and also we have 
we we commonly deploy the um, sometimes we deploy the L2TP VPN to enable the remote user to access the net the internal the end uh, the internal network of an enterprise network we gonna have an LNS and uh, uh, LAC in this figure we can see we have a um, LAC maybe uh, 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 employee from this enterprise uh, who are on a business trip and by using the L2TP VPN the LAC can access to the network resource inside of the LN, uh, inside of the enterprise this is the function main function of l2tp okay the next one is the ssl vpn secure shell vpn it's uh, it's an ssl based remote access vpn technology Mm, it allows the mobile a mobile user refer to the remote user in SSL VPN to securely and uh, con, uh, conveniently access enterprise internet and uh, internet resources, improving the work efficiency. It uh, it works uh, it works as the BNS architecture, uh, the remote OA user. For example, who might be on a business trip, it can simply open a browser and then enter the, 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 the destination address of the resource it needs and pass the corresponding authentication. Then it will have the authority to access to some specific network resources. This is how SSL VPN works. Okay, these are the typical campus network technologies. And the next I'm gonna show you three cases of uh, campus network technologies. The first one is a traditional campus network. Uh, here are, uh, there is the requirements of the, 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 the network. We can see this is a large scale, some kind of large scale campus network because it has uh, 3000 wireless and wired terminals in total. We have the requirements for the network reliabilities and also unified policy control. Uh, and we need a centralized uh, management of the network devices. So the solution is we deploy the, uh, uh, the link aggregation, we deploy the iStack or CSS to ensure reliability, and we use AC plus a fit AP. Uh, net wireless uh, architecture to 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 build up uh, WLAN, and uh, we use the VLAN technologies to on the on the access switches to differentiate users on different uh, service network segments, and the IP address are lo located by uh, to the users by using the uh, DHCP. And we also use the OSPF to, uh, to to implement the IG uh, the, the 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 routing information distribution, and then we use the access authentication uh, to 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 authenticate the users, and we use the ACL to control the policies between the users and uh, the firewall is needed in the egress room and we use the security zones uh, zones to to control traffic between inter zones and we also use the SNMP 
we enable SNMP on those network devices and maybe we will have an NMS in the ONM zone to manage the devices in a centralized manner. This is the case one for the traditional campus network. And the case, uh, case two is a virtualized campus network. Uh, in the figure we can see we have three different VNs, VN1, VN2, and VN3. I guess you know the answer. We must deploy the MRNC campus controller, right? We, the, the campus uh, controller is used, uh, we use the, the, the we use the VXLAN, BGP, EVPN, and VIF technologies to uh, divide VNs based on service requirements. Of course, these config, uh, configurations can don't need to be done by the network engineers. The MSNC campus controller will automatically deploy those configurations. We just need to give the MSNC the, the plan of the network and also some key parameters to the campus. Then the configuration things will be done by the controller. And also the, the policy metrics will be delivered by the IMASNC campus controller to the devices. We don't need to uh, manually configure those complex uh, complex ACLs on the devices. Okay, this is the case two, the virtualized campus network. And the uh, case three is a small and medium sized cloud managed cl uh, campus network. We can see we, uh, it's a, it, it is an enterprise that has many stores in the different uh, locations. So the management of those sites, I think it will be a headache for the network engineers of this enterprise. So we can use the cloud platform, the MSNC dash campers to manage uh, all these stores with one platform and we can deploy the, mm, the same policies. We can deploy the same SSID and uh, only and, and also the, the, the in the cloud campus solution, the API supports the IO, uh, we can deploy the IoT APs and uh, use the IoT, IoT slopes uh, to implement the co-site deployment of IoT and Wi-Fi. We can let the, the, the ESLs, we can let the, those IoT terminals to access access the, 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 the network by only deploy IoT inside AP. Okay, that's the K3. We also need the IMAS and C-Dash campers. Okay, then we have a quiz. We just skip this part and the summary of this course. This course provides definition of campus network we see the cl uh, classification of the campus network and also the common technologies we use in campus network and also the application scenario of those, uh, of, of those technologies. And in uh, subsequent courses, we will discuss the, some key technologies of a campus network. And we will also show you the practice of MSNC campus controller to see how this thing works and how the controller release network engineers from the burden of their daily works. Okay, that's it for, for the enterprise network, uh, a campus network overview part. Okay, we, I see we have some questions from Fernando. Regarding I must then see, I have seen in product documents, it purchase an AI based and intended drive network. How can I s explain simple and easily which concept is bought and what 
consists of Uh, hello, Fernando. Uh, for your question, I want to say that AI-based and intended, uh, intent-driven network is our goal. It, it, it's in the future. And now we take a, we, 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 we realize we achieve some little features of the Intent and uh, intent driven networks. For example, co uh, the IMAS NC campus controller cooperate with the campus insight. When the campus, uh, when when the campus insight collect the data, that about a wireless signal interfere, then the campus insight can automatically change the, for example, the channel of the APs or the, 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 the power of the APs to avoid the signal reference. reference. I, I don't know if I uh, explain the question I don't know if this makes sense to you. Maybe you can, uh, you can, you can, you can. Okay, Luis, uh, I think it's a very sensitive question, but I, what I can tell you is that the, the neck the NAC very, is very important, but I cannot be sure that it must will be taken in the exam, but I'm sure it is very important. Welcome. Okay, Fernando, we have to consider that the existing network devices, the, 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 the network devices existed in the actual network, the number of these devices are mem, uh, is, is very huge. And uh, those devices only support SNMP. So if we deploy uh, device, uh, a controller only support NetConf, then those existing devices cannot be managed or controlled by the controller. So the SNMP is still needed. Uh, Fernando, what is the network element integration? I don't understand about this word. Thank you. 
Uh, as far as I know, only Netcom without Net OpenFlow. OpenFlow is used in the DC scenario, data center scenario. And the relationship between NCE and the switchers or WACs. The NCE is, uh, we can see that it, it is a, S, uh, it's, it's a SDN controller. It controls the, those switchers, uh, WACs, and also the routers and then the APs. Okay, uh, if uh, there is no, no more questions, so uh, thank you for, uh, for, for coming to this course. And uh, later, my colleague Chris will continue the uh, course of today. Thank you.